So welcome everybody. Um, we have Christina Cachopo who is visiting us. Um, was that the right way to pronounce your name? It was actually pretty good. Yeah, it's the it's the correct Italian way. So my family has like an Americanized version, but like, yeah, you said it correctly. It's great. Okay, good. Because <laughs> yeah. I actually um, Googled a couple of different pronunciations. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't just ask you. <laughs> that, worked. Um, that was good. So Christina Cachopo is your Italian. Um, was here with us. She is the co-founder and CEO of Vanta, uh, which is a SOC 2 uh, security compliance um, company. And uh, she's going to break down the costs and benefits of SOC 2 and share some compliance tips uh, for all of you. We have a lot of um, our founders joining today um, of new companies and founders from our portfolio. So I will let uh, Christina start her um, presentation. And like I said before, we'll do a short Q&A at the end um, in about like 20 minutes or so. Please submit your questions in the chat box and I will go through them and make sure Christina gets to as many as she can uh, before the hour is up. But uh, Christina, I will hand it over to you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm excited to go through this with y'all. Uh, so I have a slide deck. Um, so I'm going to share my screen, which hopefully this all works. Oops, no, we're not going to do that. Um, sorry. Oh boy. Well, okay. Uh, so while I fix this. Um, so I have a slide deck. I'm going to go over it. Um, some pieces um, I'll sort of gloss over, but if you have questions about things, Again, as we mentioned, like please put them in the chat. Um, we'll go through them at the end. And then also the questions that I don't get to, um, I'm happy to like kind of follow up and either I can follow up with you over email or someone from Vanta can, or we'll you know, try to get try to get everything answered for you. So, okay, now um, for the for the phrase everyone's sick of at this point, can can everyone see my screen? Can everyone see the the llama now? Yes. Yes, great. Okay, wonderful. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to go through SOC 2, um, start with a, a quick agenda here. Um, so first, a bit of an introduction about me and how I, how I learned so much about SOC 2, um, then dive into what SOC 2 actually is um, and why it might be useful to you and your startup. Have a sense for the uh, audit timeline and costs. So like, how long will it take me to get a SOC 2? How much does it cost? Then use those to sort of think through when you might want to go through all of this and actually like get this, get this magic report. Um, and then just close with some tips or we've seen from other startups, customers actually even Vanta ourselves um, around, around using SOC 2 to, to scale your business. So that's what we'll cover. Um, so just quick intro, I'm Christina. Um, a, a short kind of career, career trajectory here, I suppose. I, I started my career at a, a venture capital firm. Um, investing was neat, but realized I really wanted to learn to code and build products. So did that for a few years. That took me to Dropbox, where I was the first PM working on Dropbox paper, um, which I think some of you might be familiar with, or at least a spin-offs thereof. Um, so my world used to be, we used to be collaborative document editors. Um, but then actually learning that and seeing how security review worked at Dropbox um, ended up founding Vanta uh, about three years ago. So, um, so first bit is sort of this motivation of, of kind of what is a SOC 2 or like where does this stuff come from? Um, so, okay, on this slide, we basically have like, it's a sales process. Uh, and so those of you who are, you know, at the stage where you're like brought a product to market and you're selling it, you're probably familiar with this where you have a first sales meeting with somebody, you like show them, you know, hey, I made the software, like, aren't you interested? Um, they actually do get interested. They start to research you a bit more. Everything's looking good. You're like, oh man, I might actually sign this customer. This is so exciting. Um, and then you hit like this like red, sort of stop sign uh, called security review, right? Which is when your prospect or the person you're selling to starts asking you, hey, have you gotten a SOC 2 audit? Have you gotten a compliance audit? Have you gotten a pen test, security questionnaire? Like blah, blah, like all of these specific words that sort of sum up to, hey, are you actually secure, right? And if I give you a bunch of my data, um, are you gonna be a good steward of that data? Or are you gonna like accidentally leak it all over the internet? Cause then it looks like I had a breach and then, you know, right, don't want that. And so if you can pass, it's just kind of like, again, like do not pass go, do not collect $200, like prove to me that you are reasonable and have good security. And if you do, 
a deal closes, you get a new customer, you grow your business, like life is great, like fast go and collect $200 in the monopoly analogy. Um, but if you can't, you sort of get stuck here, right? And this sort of sucks. Like you don't want these, you know, the, the you're kind of nascent startup, right? And you're getting off the ground and you don't want things stuck at this one yard line. Um, and part of this we saw the Dropbox and part of it's just like this security review step is, is getting more and more common. Um, and that's sort of encapsulated by this quote we have at the bottom of the slide from uh, one of our customer flink squares, which is basically, you know, everyone has a SOC 2 or should have one and everyone should be asked for one. And this is sort of just the new normal here. So, um, so then you're probably wondering, okay, what is this, you know, security review thing and how do I get, get through it? So um, that, Vance, I'm actually going to skip this slide. It's a, it's a little um, promotional. Um, so what is SOC 2 actually? Um, so SOC 2 is a standard created by the American Institute of CPAs, strangely enough. Um, and basically it's, it's just this report and really it's a PDF that shows your prospects and your customers that your company takes security really seriously. Um, and in order to get one, you have an auditor come through who like validates your security practices. So looks at all the things you do and you say you do to write this report up. And so if you think back to the like, you know, giant red stop sign, right? A SOC 2 report is sort of how you answer all those questions and say like, hey, we are reasonable. We have this really rigorous list of practices. They're actually in place. You can trust me. I mean, you, should, you know, I, I'm telling you they're in place, but you don't even have to trust me. This third party auditor came in and like checked everything. You can trust that. So that's what, that's what this report sort of is and, and why it's useful and how it ties back to that sales process. Um, there are two types of SOC 2 reports. Um, so if you've actually been asked for one, you've probably seen this terminology. Um, there's a SOC 2 type 1 and a SOC 2 type 2. Um, this is confusing naming and definitely confusing sort of annotation. But basically they're, um, to just kind of put this in a little bit more of like engineering speak or technical speak, the difference between these two is not in what it checks. They both check the same set of things. Um, but a type one report is sort of one day of data collection. So it's sort of saying, hey, I'm an auditor and checked uh, how everything looked on Tuesday and on Tuesday, everything was good. So, you know, great. I don't know what happened on Wednesday. Tuesday was good. And then a type two report has sort of data for several months. So it's like I checked for, you know, a continuous period of time. I checked, you know, everywhere between January and, and April um, and the company's security practices were in good shape. So um, when you're asked for a SOC 2 report, you're, you might get asked for one version or another, um, a type one or a type two. And if you're not asked for a specific one, you could go back and clarify that. And so do the trade-offs here are kind of strength versus speed um, and to some extent cost. So, right, it's easier to wait for one day to pass for data collection than it is to wait for three months or six months to pass. Um, but on the flip side, so it's kind of from your perspective, but on the flip side for your buyer, it, it feels better to know that stuff was in place for a longer period of time. So the, this is sort of a push-pull between kind of you, right, you, the, the software vendor and your buyer. Um, this dives into the four sections of a SOC 2 report. So sort of you're like, okay, great. You told me a SOC 2 was a PDF. You told me it was a big list of all my security practices that someone checked, but like, what's it actually look like or tell me more? Um, so there's actually the table of contents from like our Vanta SOC 2 report. So it has four sections. Um, as you read them, they're sort of you know written in compliance speak and you might be looking at the words on the slide and being like, what do these words mean? So we'll walk you through them. The first section is basically the auditor kind of confirming that the company is in good shape. It's like kind of a cover letter from an auditor saying, hey, I looked at the company really closely. Here's all the stuff I found. So we're all in good shape. Then there's section two. So this is the company's sort of cover letter where the company says, hey, yep, we gave the auditor really good information. Everything the auditor says is accurate because we gave them good information. Section three is um, sort of a narrative and you said like 15, 20 pages where the company sort of writes, hey, here's paragraphs about all of our security practices. So, you know, we might have this in place and that in place and we, you know, make sure everybody has two factor on their email and whatever it is. Here, we're gonna write for a few pages about our security practices. 
And then the last section, section four, um, is a kind of the deep dive into the specific security practices. So this section is about 50 pages. And it ends up just being this kind of giant tables where all of the security practices are listed out. And then often an order is sort of this looks good or like actually this looked a little sketchy. Um, so their, their assessment of what's going on. I think the next slide I'll give you an example of like what one of those tables, yeah, let's give this. Uh, okay, actually I'm gonna jump to this and then I'll go back. So when I say like the last section are these big tables of security practices, this is what it looks like. Um, and again, so it's literally from, from our report. So you can see, so the parts, the rows that are in gray are, car, are called controls. Um, and so this is sort of security speak or compliance speak for like a you know high level statement of like, hey, here's something we do. So um, I'll just read one and translate it. Uh, the entity obtains or generates and uses relevant quality information to support the functioning of an internal control. Ooh. Okay, so what that means in a little bit more plain English is the company monitors its internal systems to make sure everything's okay. Um, so that's sort of the gray bit. And then the, the white rows underneath uses a software application to objectively monitor. This is just ways in which we're sort of again, using the monitoring uh, piece of so the ways in which the gray row is true. So you can think of like the gray row is again, like the control, the statement of a practice. And then the white rows are like proof points basically. So that's what the table is. And then on the right side of the slide where we have evidence, this is just a list of like, well, how do you convince an auditor that, you know, again, your proof points are actually true. Um, and in this world, you, you, show, you try to show them proof of, you know, the thing you're doing. And so in some cases, you can see we use Fanta, in some cases we use Datadog, right? But, but basically the name of the game here is convince your auditor that you do the thing in the gray row. You convince them, you do the thing in the gray row by proving to them the, the white thing, things in the white rows. And you convince them of the white things by showing them evidence that can live in some number of tools. You sort of rinse and repeat this process for call it 70 or 80 controls. So 70 or 80 of the, like, the gray lines. Um, and when you do that, uh, you know, you'll, you'll kind of end up with a SOC 2 report. So I'm gonna go back a few slides that I skipped over, but I wanted to kind of tie again, what section four looks like and what a SOC 2 report is to that actual example. So I think next up is like, okay, so this is, we have this understanding of what a SOC 2 is, great. Um, how long does it take to get one? What does this process look like? Um, so this is, this is what the timeline looks like without automation. So like without Vanta, say, software tool here. Um, really broadly, two steps here. Step one is get ready. <laughs> um, and getting ready looks like writing and documenting all your, your controls, right? So all, all the stuff you wanna say you do, like write all those down, um, get an auditor to agree with them, and then make sure you actually do them. Cause you know, again, you're, you're gonna get checked on them. So that's step one. Step two is have an auditor look at it and see, and you know, give their assessment, right? Um, so review that list with an auditor, show, prove that you're following. This is show them, hey, we monitor our system, we monitor in these ways, here's what we have set up in Datadog, the, on and on. Um, and then how long that takes, again, sort of is the type one or type two thing, but it's like, do you wanna show the auditor you do all this stuff for one day, or do you wanna show an auditor you do all this stuff for three to six months? Um, so this is, this is that overall timeline. Great, um, okay, this slide, so there's, kind of ways you can do this manually. This is how historically this used to work. Um, really, uh, if you don't do this with software, you will probably hire a consultant. Um, in that you need someone to, well, somehow you've got to get a list of all your controls, right? All the things you say you're gonna do. And you can totally figure out this world yourself. Um, but as founders or people who work at early stage companies, I imagine you have other things you'd like to do and kind of should do with your time. So you can hire a security consultant um, who can walk you through this process and sort of handhold you through it. Um, and there's sort of kind of time and cost. I won't read through all everything on the slide, but there's sort of the, the higher higher consultant version of this. Or um, you can make an automated approach and like rather than hiring a consultant, hire buy a piece of software um, like Fanta that will help you both get everything in good shape, monitor that it's there, and then interface with the auditor. 
as well. So they can they can use that too. Happy to talk more about this later, but um, don't don't want to um, uh, kind of belabor this. But so a snapshot, great. Um, popular question is great. Um, now I know what a SOC two is. Now I know how long it takes. How much does it cost? Um, so look, ten to eighty thousand dollars. I recognize it's a very large range. Um, <laughs> and so just to break that down a little bit. Uh, there's a few levers here. One is, you know, how much of a consultant's time or like outside resourcing do you use? And again, in general, this stuff is totally learnable um, and to some extent Googleable. It just will take your time. And honestly, as a, again, as a founder, you, you probably have better stuff to do. And um, of all the things you could read in the world, I'm not sure compliance regulations are in fact maybe in anybody's top 10, but totally tractable, or you could pay more. Um, and then the other big, um, sort of range here is how much the audit costs. So we have ten to fifty thousand dollars on the slide, um, and that range. There's there's two big factors there. One is how large your company is. Um, so if you're under 10, 20 people, like you'll you'll definitely be on the closer to ten thousand dollar range. Um, the other big factor in audit price here is how oh, the name brand of the firm, right? So if you so these are CPA firms that do these things. So someone like an EY or a PwC or a Deloitte could in fact do your SOC 2 audit. Um, those folks will actually probably, probably charge you closer to like 80 or $100,000 themselves. Um, or you could use, there's any section of like regional firms or smaller firms or like there's, there's all sorts of other firms that might do this. Um, and what we've often seen for, for startups in particular is they sort of use smaller firms um, initially. And then over time, might graduate and use some kind of shinier or more brand name audit firms, but they definitely start on the low side here. So again, wanted to give a sense of overall cost. I'm happy to answer more specific questions about this because I know this is a large range. Um, and then of course, obligatory, uh, again, to use a software tool, a software tool like Vanta will in fact cover um, a good deal of the prep work, just not the audit. Okay, great. So, okay, so that's that's a lot of stuff about a SOC too, like why and when should you actually get one of these things? Should you be thinking about this now in three months and three years, like what's going on? So um, we'll do the the kind of frameworks piece here and then, and then some actually kind of calculations on the next slide. So, quote here from one of our customers, Affinity, um, you might know them, San Francisco company, they build a like personal CRM. Um, and so they got their SOC 2 report for two reasons. First was holding themselves accountable um, to a rigorous kind of security framework. And this was sort of internally focused, like, hey, we want a sense relatively early on in the company's life cycle, a sense of security being important, of this being something we care about, we're going to prioritize, like, we sort of want to make that commitment to ourselves. Second part, um, again, going back to the, the very first slide and the, the big stop sign in the sales process, because um, they wanted a streamlined, standardized way to communicate their own security practices to customers. So again, this is sort of using a SOC 2 report to be able to go to your prospects or go to your customers and say, hey, we take security really seriously. Again, you don't even have to just rely on my word. Like we had, we you know wrote down our practices. We made sure they were true. We brought an auditor in. Like here's rigorous proof. So that's how Affinity thought about it. Um, uh, if you want a, a more sort of quote unquote math based or like numbers based way of thinking about it, a few ideas here. Um, headline: um, You want one. Uh, at least when, or perhaps before, um, not having one becomes really costly. Um, so a few ways to think about that. One, um, so let's say one deal, like one customer is asking you to get a SOC 2. Well, then you can be like, look, I don't know, maybe this one deal will earn the company $50,000 in revenue. And based on you know the prior slide, I think it'll only cost my company $20,000 to get SOC 2 compliant. Well, 50,000, like spending $20,000 to get 50,000 sounds really good. Maybe I want to take this seriously. Um, so that's sort of measured by deal size. Um, the other way to think about it is, is not kind of dollars based, but lighthouse logo focused. Um, so as one example, uh, I know that Slack um, requires all of its vendors to have SOC 2 reports. And so you could be like, look, I really want Slack. I really want Slack as a customer. I really want to tell other people Slack as a customer. 
maybe to get them to be a customer, I would only charge them $5,000 and it will still cost me $20,000 to get SOC 2 compliant. But when I think about it, I just like want Slack of the customer so much, I'm going to pay for this now. Just don't really think about it. Um, and then the other point here, so circumventing SOC 2 by doing other things, has that become more expensive? So this is, you know, often, not always certainly, but often, um, you can sort of get around having a SOC 2 for a while and say, hey, uh, you know, I'm the CTO of the company, I'll jump on the phone with you, I'll answer questions, I'll fill out your security questionnaire, I'll, you know, do other things that kind of aren't scalable, but like whatever, <laughs> just wanna just wanna get this done. Um, and those things totally work for a while. And then at some point, if you're growing, you know, again, you get to the point where you're like, ah, as a CTO, I cannot spend all of my time on the phone with customers proving that we are secure. Like I need something else. Um, so, so that's when it might become more useful. And then just work OS quote here of again, nobody sort of wakes up in the morning, super excited about one of these audits, honestly. But there are huge benefits to completing one. Um, specifically, they help your company grow help you close larger deals, all of that. So, um, and then once you've got one, um, you can actually use SOC 2 compliance as, as a bit of a sales strategy. And by this, we mean just sort of getting out in front of prospects or customers that ask you if you're secure, ask you about how you store data, all sorts of things there. Um, so just a few tips we've, we've seen from our customers actually, and the ones that, again, if they, if they invest in this early, they've got their SOC 2 report. Um, then they tend to like share it proactively as soon as they know and actually sharing it proactively um, heads off some of the questions they might otherwise have gotten because it, it sort of conveys to their buyer, hey, we're on top of things. Like we care about this, we got it. Like, you know, again, ask us questions if you want, but like, here's all the information you need. So that can actually be quite helpful. Um, there's SOC 2 badges you can put on your website. Um, we also see a lot of folks kind of writing blog posts or LinkedIn posts saying like, hey, we have this major milestone. You know, this is part of our commitment to securing our customers data um, and, you know, being good stewards of what's entrusted with us. Like we went this audit, da, 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 da. Um, but again, it, it sort of kind of ends up with, with the SOC 2 report being this key piece of your, your marketing or sales collateral especially if maybe you're sort of moving up market or selling to larger and larger customers. Um, and at the end kind of the day, it, it really is all about protecting your, your customer's data. So just a few quotes on this slide from customers and won't certainly read them, but they, this, they all sort of TLDR into, look, like we, we want to be a customer centric company. And part of that for us, or part of that in 2021 is again being a really good steward of customer data that's entrusted to us. Um, and so that's important to us when we you know, think about our vendors, it's important to us when we think about the service we provide, it's important to us as we communicate our value onto our potential customers, like it's a big deal, it's kind of an increasingly big deal. Um, and in a lot of ways, it's hard to imagine some of this, like out of this, this idea of, of demonstrating your security to your customers becoming less of a big deal uh, in the future. So I think, uh, yeah, and just uh, two more slides here. So one, just best practices from Vanta customers. Um, so this is something of a wrap, but this is really things we've seen across our customer base. I'm happy to ask, you know, answer questions about any of this in just a moment. Um, so first bit, don't wait. Um, starting early actually makes the process easier. Um, and ensures, it ensures your deals don't get stopped, right? You like won't end up at this big stop sign and, and sort of end up being the, the person who's sort of Googling like what is a SOC 2 uh, the moment you've, you've been asked for it, which is not anyone's favorite place to be. The other part of starting early is there are sort of practices and cultural pieces here um, that are just easier to implement when you're two people, 10 people, then certainly like a hundred people at your company. Um, so, it, so it really is easier to do when you're earlier and then you sort of just like, these can become part of your, your company's operating procedures. Um, from a company and culture building perspective, um, make the process transparent, talk about what you're doing and why, and talk about kind of the why behind it again. So like why, like again, no one is super excited when you say the word SOC 2, but you know, hey, we're using this to demonstrate our trust to our customers, we, like hold ourselves to our own standard, like want this to be a part of securing customer data, to be part of our culture, like uh, all of that. There actually is a, a very much a culture building moment here. 
Um, and as part of that at your company, kind of building a culture around debriefs and retrospectives. Um, so you, some of the SOC 2 process, you can sort of encourage some of this um, and, and just being able to do it. It's, it's sort of a good um, reminder if this is a piece of your culture you want anyway. Um, other best practices, don't think of it a one and done. You wanna like continuously look at this stuff. Um, these audits recur every year, so they're not even one and done. Um, and so just kind of like thinking, thinking on a continual basis, what are we doing? What are the practices around customer data um, and how can we strengthen them? Um, and then finally, uh, uh, especially kind of historically or variance of reputation is you know, security and compliance are sort of at odds with, with development. Um, there's new tools, automation that can significantly reduce the friction. Um, uh, and then there's also just parts of, again, baking this stuff early it takes time, but um, you, it is then part of your processes again. And so as you scale, it'll continue to be true. Happy to talk more about this again in particular, especially if any of you have, have concerns on the engineering side. Um, and I think the last bit is, I mean, thank you so much. Um, and sort of thank you, uh, 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 Vanta has sort of a special offer for South Park Commons companies. Um, so you uh, discount off and, and you can just kind of redeem by emailing one of us um, and mentioning that you're a South Park Commons company. Um, and we, are, we would um, you know, love to give you this discount. Um, also included a few logos from customers um, uh, that are, were South Park Commons companies at, at one point. Um, and so with that, um, I think I'll, I'll hand it back over and, and open it up for questions. But again, thank you all so much. Thank you, Christina. Um, it looks like we have a question from Jess. Um, would love to know whether there are scenarios or company profiles for which you would recommend against a SOC 2 at that point. Ooh. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so maybe a high level guidance here is I would really recommend you let your customers guide you here, right? And so I suppose um, if you're not hearing a demand for a SOC 2 or a demand for security review, right, um, from your customers, I would just guess you probably have other priorities that can keep you busy, so I wouldn't worry about this one. Um, you might, I don't know if this actually answers your question, right? Um, I mean, yeah, feel free, to, feel free to tell me and jump in if it's not, but I think general guidance here is, is again, ask your customers or ask your prospects. Um, and that's both deals in progress, right? And also to the extent you're, you're comfortable, Go back to your, your some of your closed customers, and you know, you can be like, "Hey, would this process have been different if we had a SOC two? Would security review have been shorter? That sort of thing." They're also a really good source of information. All right, and then we have another question from Moise. Um, how long is the SOC two valid for? Is there a timeline for getting audited again? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so twelve months after you get it basically. And I mean, again, these are PDFs, right? So like, it's not like your PDF explodes on day 366. Um, but literally what happens is auditors put dates on these and they put the dates really big. Um, and there's sort of a you know, cultural norm against sending out old ones where you kind of don't want to come off as cheap or out of practice or any of that. Um, so once a year. Great. Oh, it looks like we have one more. Um, does SOC 2 and ISO certification share similarities? And if so, which do you recommend getting first? Oh, yeah, so um, sort of. OK, so I mean, the ISO is ISO 2701, um, which is sort of the European SOC 2, right? It's also how we describe it internally. And Phantom, that's, it's a similar-ish standard in that it's, again, really high level, like, hey, is this organization secure? And we're going to think about that from the people that they hire, the tools they use, the access that people have to the tools, the way the cloud infrastructure is set up, like holistic-ish picture of security. So at a high level, they're trying to do the same things. Um, they do them a little bit differently, but there tends to be a lot of overlap. So. Um, I'm going to actually, so the way I'm going to answer this is when we were looking at this space and kind of figuring out how to start what is now Vanta three years ago, we chose to start with SOC 2 and not ISO. So now obviously I'm going to tell you I have SOC 2, but like kind of rewinding three years and you're like, we were trying to start with what people needed first, right? You're like, what is the hair on fire problem today? 
Um, and so what we figured, I think it's, I feel, I feel good about, but the way we thought about it was like, look, SOC 2 is the American thing. So American companies prefer it. ISO is a European thing. Um, so it's European and kind of Singaporean companies prefer it. There are more, the like software market for companies that, you know, they're buying software in the US is larger. So it is easier to get a European company to reluctantly accept SOC 2 than it is to get an American company to reluctantly accept ISO. So that's sort of how we thought about it, which is again, you could you could get the Europeans to accept the American thing, um, but the Americans are, you know, so so um, America centric that uh, they want the SOC too. So that's how we thought about it. Um, and next one is from Amanda. Um, Amanda has a fintech company, and so she wanted to know about your experience working with other fintech companies. Um, are they getting SOC two certified? are compliant because um, they want to or because their bank partner is demanding it and um, a general picture of the types of fintech companies that you work with, if any. For sure. Hello, Amanda. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I think in general, um, so we get inquiries from both folks uh, who want their banking partner needs it and who it's self-driven. But look, when it like kind of push comes to shove and you go to the company and you're like, hi, all in, you're probably gonna spend 20, $25,000 and we're gonna take an engineer for a few weeks. The self-driven companies tend not to convert as much, right? Like kind of as they shouldn't, right? Like they probably have other priorities then. Um, so it's very much bank partner driven, really. Um, of again, kind of like what converts and, and where do people actually end up spending time and money. Um, some of our, smallest customers. I mean, like we, well, especially to the me of three years ago, Vanta has a surprising number of like companies that are customers that are two person startups and they're nearly all FinTech and they're nearly all dependent on that bank partner to launch their product, right? So it's like, they can't take anything to market without the bank relationship. They can't get the bank relationship without a SOC two. And so they end up doing a SOC two and they're two people on a couch. Um, which is not something that I think, you know, they or we kind of ever like thought would happen, um, but, but more a testament to how SOC2 has sort of been again, that like first default default step um, in a lot of processes, including taking FinTech companies to market, products to market. Do we have any more questions for Christina? If not, if you have one, um, feel free to unmute yourself just so we don't miss you if you're too busy typing. Um, and if not, that's okay. Thank you. Oh, hey, Kristen, yeah. I have one more question. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if there's any plan for uh, Venta to support HIPAA compliance in the future? Yes, we're working on it now. Um, so very much so, yeah. And I think maybe broadly, one thing we found is there's, well, there's some similarities across these standards, um, more and less with different ones, but but there actually tends to be a lot. So uh, we, we're working on HIPAA today and it, it's very much a company goal. And then there's also kind of a host of other standards too we're working on. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Oh, one more, it's a good one. Yeah, is type two the predominantly accepted report as opposed to type one? Generally ish, yes. Sorry, so like again, best guidance here is go ask your customer. Um, but yes, right. And this is because when someone's trying to figure out, like, hey, is a startup reasonable security, having again that like three months at six months of data is just more meaningful. So what we've seen is sometimes, um, buyers like bigger companies will be okay with like hey get a type one the first year so you have something and then make sure it's that when you renew it the next year make sure it's the type two so sometimes we see that um if you talk to auditors at least historically i think to some extent today they will try to actually sell you both at once so they'll say hey get two in one year and have two audit fees in one year um, and start with the type one so you have a thing quickly and then we'll start collecting data and then we'll get you the second thing, the, the really valuable one. Um, and with Vanta, we've tried to push on that in sort of two ways. One be like, well, part of that pitch too was like, 
uh, I think auditors being a little, um, um, auditors selling two things at once. And so saying, you know, hey, maybe maybe your controls aren't set. So let's let's have kind of, you know, break this apart. Whereas uh, having a continuous monitoring solution like Vanta is like, you, you know, if you're in good shape or not, right? Like you don't need someone to come in and spot check you. Uh, so they'll be checked by code. So that's part of it. The other thing we've seen is like once you're in a type two period and you're like, again, waiting for all this data collection to happen, you've already engaged an auditor, you've already paid them. And so you can get the auditor to often, you can ask them, they can write you a letter that says like, hi, I'm an auditor, I'm engaged in, you know, auditing South Park Commons, like here's the date when I expect to finish, like any questions, let me know. Um, and that often helps too. So that that's like not a full report, but it's, you know, something that shows you're serious and you can pass on today and follow up when you, when you get your real report. Uh, Jess has another question. Um, this SOC 2 compliance cascade. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you are assigned to customers who are seeking their own SOC 2, does the fact that you have a SOC 2 affect their, them getting a SOC 2 or wanting to? Yeah, so kinda, like it's a little gray, but ish. Um, the ish is, as of a few years ago, ha part of having a SOC 2 is saying, hey, we've reviewed all of our vendors, like all the people who provide software to us. And we've reviewed them in a rigorous way and subjected them to da 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 da. And like, then you ask an auditor, like, what does your rigorous way mean? And they'll be like, oh, you should ask them to get a SOC 2. So there is a strong encouragement to sort of make this recursive and like turtles all the way down or SOC 2s all the way down. Um, it's a little fuzzy and you can argue out of it like yourself, but like if you're if you're hearing some of this in the market, this is why. Do you have any other questions? Right. If not, then we can um, end it there. Christina, thank you so much for generously donating your time and expertise to teaching us about SOC 2. For sure. Thank you all so much for, for having in the great questions. Um, if anything comes up, just um, shoot me an email. I'm Christina at Vanta, just first name at Vanta. So Christina at Vanta.com. Correct. Cool. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. And thank you, Christina. Great. Thank you so much. Time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.